Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Speciality Restaurant Q4 and FY24 Earnings Conference Call on hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participants' line will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Karan Bhuvania. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's our pleasure at ISEC to host Q4 FY24 Results Conference Call of Speciality Restaurants. The management is today represented by Mr. Anjan Chatterjee, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Abhid Chatterjee, Full Time Director, and Mr. Rajesh Kumar Mota, Executive Director, of Finance and CFO. I will now like to hand over the call to Mr. Anjan Chatterjee for his opening remarks, post which we can open for Q&A session. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Karan. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, specialty restaurant, as you know, has been there in this food and beverage industry for quite some time. I'll just give you a short background of the fact that uh, we are known to be uh, oriental brand that's the main in China being the flagship primarily. Uh, so during pandemic, uh, besides the background before pandemic, because that was the most critical time of our life and so many lessons to learn. So during pandemic, what we did was, uh, it was initially shut, as you know, that nothing was moving. Slowly in between there was an interim period, but to keep the brand relevant, it was important for us to be on top of people's mind. So after 10 or 12 days of understanding that deliveries are continuing, the government allowed us to do that. We concentrated on the deliveries because dine-in was zero. Historically, the company has been a, a fine dining company. In the sense, it's primarily dependent on the dine-in footfalls. But during that particular period of time, we realized that the 78% of delivery that we were getting was not a reality, and this will become a trend. We quickly went back to the drawing board to understand this as the pandemic was towards the end, Omicron time. We worked back to understand that this is going to be a vertical in itself, and we put a lot of work got a senior management person to lead and head this delivery vertical, started working on the packaging and all the paraphernalia, went back to the aggregators, renegotiated our deals uh, wherever possible, and then we understood that this is going to be a reality. So what has happened now is that from 7-8%, I don't have the specific, we have grown to a 28% on delivery which has become a vertical within our company. So then we're talking about now on the fine dining. As the pandemic started ending, we saw the dining footfalls growing, and it continued over a period of time, and that was a period of revenge eating, revenge tourism, which is completely known and understood by everyone. So that particular fiscal, we understood that, yes, we can now go back because pandemic forced us to shut restaurants. We were actually on the fence sitting uh, restaurants which were not making profit. So we were kind of compelled, this is a lesson, that we shut 29 units of ours. The ones which were actually not doing well enough for us to work for them. After that, we understood that now we have to go back to the growth part. I'm happy to tell you that we have realized and we have understood that the world is changing from a mainland China, mainland China, which is in the flagship. We have to extend, line extend ourselves to the Asian cuisine. And fortunately, we had a brand which we had done way back almost 12 years ago, which is Asia Kitchen by mainland China, which started with Goregao. And then we did it in Pune, and they did it in Bangalore, we and Calcutta. So we started looking at that brand very closely, and you'll be happy to know that we did five Asia kitchens in the last fiscal. 
and going forward, there will be many more Asia kisses coming. It was important to understand that many of our restaurants have lived almost for about 18, 20 years. So it was important to understand for us to renew them, refresh them, and renovate them. So during this period, we have also renewed and renovated three restaurants, one of Pawai, mainland China, which is Mother Mainland China. Then we did another one in Andheri West. And the third one was in Pune, opposite the Marriott, that's the ICC. These are all iconic stores of ours. And during, I mean, we had to shut, take a shutdown, compulsive shutdown for almost three to three and a half months. And this was important that we had to bite the bullet. We said that, yes, it will be shut down, revenues will be down, profitability will be affected, but it had to be renewed, refreshed. So that's one, and we've seen SSG growing after that. As you know that everybody, there's a fatigue in terms of decor and the look and feel, and the world is changing around us. So that was one part. Now that we talk about, we are on a growth path. As you know that these are the restaurants which are built, and slow and steady uh, growth is coming in and takes six, eight months to break even, but we are extremely encouraged because the anchorage of the mainland China makes a lot of difference. Asia Kitchen is anchored by a mainland China, which is the most familiar brand in terms of the recall and the respect. Now, the growth that we have coming forward is the details which will be fielded in the Q&A, but I can only say this to you that within this period of time, my son, Avik, who has come in and he's much younger and not as old as me, so he came in with, with the concept that it is important to have certain wet-led restaurants because the, the average age of Indians is low and, it's important, and they're all going out to not just eat, they're also drinking. That's an experiential truth which is coming as a reality. So quickly, he built a restaurant called Episode in Pawai, which was piloted over a period of time and has been showing extremely good uh, bottom lines and editor levels. Then, so now going forward, there'll be a combination of the Asia Kitchen and Episode, which is a, a, a details of which will be given by Avi. One interesting thing which is important to be mentioned here, our kitchens were very large and we had an opportunity to sweat them. During pandemic, we quickly adapted that all the Asian brands in the form of Made in China, which is the mother brand, supposing it's in Andheri West, we added Asia Kitchen delivery there and also actually pressed the button on a brand called Hakka, which has a few dining restaurants only in the city of Calcutta. And we got that into the kitchen. So it's called the Kitchen Within Kitchen. So there are three delivery happening from the same unit with manpower, which is fixed. Then you have the only cost is food cost and the aggregator's cost. So that has also given us a lot of encouragement. So any restaurant that we are growing and building now, we are putting three brands coming in because they're all oriental, there's a synergy. So they are giving us a lot of strength in terms of deliveries, which is very much a reality and possibilities. And the combination of a wetland, which is in the form of episode, number of restaurants, etc., will be taken by Abhi. And the oriental growth with the mainland China line extension with the anchorage of mainland China will be the futuristic levels of ours. One very important thing is that we've done a lot of mistakes. We have realized that expansion without profitability has no meaning. Uh, as you know that any entrepreneur at any given point of time gets, en gets enthused by getting into an expansion mode, which is very right, but some of them were pre-time, like indoor and places like Chandigarh, which is now showing better colors, but indoor, Jaipur were not ready at that point of time, although we had gone to all these cities because we understood the expansions 
will be Bangalore was another one. So now we are back to one understanding that it will be slow and steady and profitable growth. But we also realize that in the short term, we will have to take some hit or the other because all these restaurants take, mature stores take at least six to eight months. So it, it, it actually builds in a little bit of short term trouble and turbulence within the, on the bottom line. But in the longish term, we will understand that we have a formidable brand, we have a bandwidth, and we will be able to win. So this is the overall understanding and background. So any Q&As on the future or any other questions, I leave it to the forum. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Deepang, San Deepan Sankaran Narayanan, Trust Line PMS. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks a lot for, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, so firstly, from my side, uh, so what is the kind of uh, store additions uh, happened uh, during last year? And uh, how many stores are we planning to open uh, next uh, two, three years? So you are, I, I mean, there's a bit of a jar in this particular sound, but I would like to uh, repeat your question as we understand for my comprehension. So you are talking about the number of restaurants that we are going to be opening in next two three years. Ah uh, yes, sir. And also, uh, what is the store addition happened last year? Yeah. Okay. So I will just leave this to uh, for Avik, my son, Avik Chatterjee, to take this question. Sure. Hello. Um, so last year we opened five new Asia Kitchen restaurants, and uh, we renovated three mainland Chinas. Uh, in the last cycle. In the years to come, next, this current year, we would be on track to open eight new restaurants and ninth may come in. And in the next three years, we would be opening minimum of 25 new restaurants. Okay, okay. And uh, when, when we are talking about uh, this uh, re renovation and uh, re uh, of this, our existing stores, so what, what is the kind of uh, CapEx uh, planned over there? And uh, the stores which have already uh, renovated, so what is the kind of uh, uh, incremental growth we are seeing over uh, pre-renovation uh, stage? Sure. So the, cap, the first point is the CapEx is around 2 CR per store. This is only on the stores that have crossed 17 to 18 years of existence and with this we've also understood that we do have a 25 percent overall revenue jump which includes our liquor food as well as delivery for the unit okay so how many stores are we uh, planning to renovate over next two three years over the next two years it would not be more than three Okay, okay. And uh, what kind of capex uh, we are planning for these uh, new stores? 25 CR for the new expansion. Okay, thanks a lot. I'll join back with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitya Shah from Kamakya Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I wanted to ask what's the update on the inorganic expansion that was planned due to the heavy cash of books. Any update on that? Hi, I, Anjan Chatterjee here again. So uh, we've been uh, talking to uh, an international oriental brand. The so discussions are on. But as you know, many of them, the ask could be difficult for us. So we don't want to get into a situation because 
with God's grace, we've been able to create brands and have the capacity to expand them. So we have to take an understanding internally that if the number which they ask for is very high, which is being negotiated at the moment, it may be a possibility that we would not do that. But the discussions are on, not just with one. And there's another one, an association of our master franchisee in the form of, uh, you know, who could be associated with us and we could get into a partnership with them. That's also a discussion which is on. So uh, these are under, uh, I would say that discussion almost towards the end of negotiation and we should be giving you a news soon. Okay. Uh, and uh, just to understand that you had given a presentation a few months back where you had given targets of, you know, tripling the revenue over the next six years with uh, margins of 25%. So I'm guessing this growth will be coming in from all inorganic expansion because if you see the last 10 years, your sales growth uh, compounded growth rate has been around 10%. So if you're guiding for 20% compounded growth over the next six years, I'm guessing a large chunk of it would be only through inorganic, right? Yes, it will be a combo of both. And uh, as we are understanding that the you know discussions are on, so we will the when we projected this kind of a growth, which was completely based on a combination of inorganic and organic. Right. And uh, sir, you had uh, raised money through a uh, preferential issue. So how much of that money has been utilized and uh, how much is still left? See, the total uh, money which had to be coming in was... Uh, how much was that? Exactly. So out of the 49, to be specific, 24 crores is already used. Okay. And uh, what is the cash on books currently after uh, this quarter? Exactly today. 169.7. Okay. Good. And was there any uh, reason for a sharp margin fall in this quarterly uh, result? Because of the fact that we've added new stores, five of them, and as you know that they take time to become mature, so we also have to give invitation and introductory prices to get in more footfall for a period of three to four months, after which we slowly add and come back to a level. So that's the reason. And uh, I just wanted to understand your vision, uh, you know, excluding the inorganic uh, path of growth. For your current scenario, what is the vision going forward, just to understand for the next two to three years? I, I, I'll let Avik... Talk about this. So, for our current, current vision is to strengthen our uh, stance on the Asian market, Asian food business, which is uh, with our power brand, mainland China, Asia Kitchen, and and Hakka, which is a delivery friendly brand. Uh, that is our first uh, priority. Alongside that, our vision is also to take a grab a bigger market share in the wet led liquor driven businesses as well, which is obviously paired by food. These are the two categories that we would be uh, developing within the company, and that would also show our future growth and expansion. Okay. And uh, lastly, I wanted to ask, say, what kind of uh, money would you be spending on the acquisition? And with the balance cash left, do you have any plans of increasing your holding through a buyback or anything of the sort? Uh, currently, we are not... Uh, looking at it because, you know, we don't want to get into a uh, situation where we end up borrowing money, huge funds coming in. We've been always believing in a debt-free company from the day one. And if required, we will dilute some stakes and buyback, etc. will come as and when we go with the cycle. Right. And there were also some catering uh, initiatives that were undertaken in the last one year. Uh, any progress on that? Yeah. So we've already built one uh, backfitting hall in Calcutta, which is a fairly large, just getting into finishing stages. One is, uh, so the second one is coming in, in Bombay, where we already have an asset, and we are renovating that. 
and there could be a possibility in Bombay city in Bandra. We are under discussions to do that. And internally, we've actually got a vertical for catering, which is called speciality experiences. And it is, I would say that it's growing slowly and steadily. Okay, thank you. That's all from my side. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Patel from Total Sensor. Please go ahead. Hello? Yes, sir. You are Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I visited a Dadar outlet, which I think uh, of Asia Kitchen, which uh, recently opened in the month of uh, uh, October or November 2023. Yeah. In Mumbai. So I visited first time in the month of uh, uh, December, I guess, uh, on November. And uh, what I sorry, on the 21st of February, I visited first time. And at 9.30, there were hardly 10 people. So that's actually a prime time for any restaurants. But there were hardly 10 people. I asked one of uh, the... Uh, captain and he said that it's a fairly new restaurant so that's why there is no uh, awareness about uh, the restaurant that's why there is less crowd then second time i visited in uh, on 9th of may uh, this month and uh, around 9 45 there were uh, 15 to 20 people including three of us so my question is uh, how much time do we uh, give to any restaurant before we think of closing it down? See, these are, as you know, that as you open a restaurant, there's no awareness to start with. We also go slow. We don't have a celebrity coming and opening it because that's what we believe in the customer is the celebrity. So... Uh, during the time mid-October, we opened it. When you went in December, it was just about to be, you know, we were pressing the button of getting amplification in terms of awareness. And then again, when you went on the second time, I don't know if you went on, I think you went on a weekday. Yes, so, I, I, both the times I went on the weekdays only. Yeah, so weekdays, as you know, are weak. Uh, and it's, it's about Friday, Saturday, Sunday as, is the peak all over the world, including India. So if you go now on a, on a weekday, you will continue to find limited footfall, especially during lunches, but you'll be very happy to know that the numbers have grown to a level that we should be breaking even in next few months, and it's growing by the day by the hour. The interesting part is that, um, as you know, that mainly China is a known brand, and they, we have that kind of a regard and respect. So the moment people come and see the Anchorage of Asia Kitchen with Baby China, which takes a little discovery time, we see people coming in and getting into you know, the restaurant and they use it and then believe that, yes, they like the restaurant and then hence the loyal customers start coming in. And another point just to add to that is sometimes uh, markets take some time for restaurants to build up. Uh, for example, at the same year, we opened Asia Kitchen in Viviana Mall in Thane, and probably the first week, we were full house. So uh, markets also depend on the locations, and locations... Mall specific. Yeah, that's also mall specific, because Dadar, as you know, is a very price-sensitive market, and there's, although there's a bastion in the same building, after bastion came in, of course, the footfalls grew, so that Koinur Mall takes a little more time than maybe a Viviana, or if we talk about a Wakar, which we have opened in Phoenix Mill, from the day one we've seen footfalls coming in because these malls have the you know, capacity to attract more people because they've, they're more popular and they've been in the business for a longer period of time. Okay. Uh, my second question is about... Uh, why we are doing all the asset-heavy businesses, like just now you mentioned that uh, uh, you have uh, op uh, you are working on one of the uh, hall in uh, conference hall in Kolkata, and uh, one more you are looking in Bandra. 
so why we are doing it on our own why we are not just running our own catering business so we are actually doing a, a dynamic model one space in calcutta is a building which is again under partnership and we are the sole caterers for the banquet in our catering division we do also outdoor catering that means the rental assets are not ours uh, we go up to a ground a hall a home and uh, various locations for corporates as well and uh, these are the different kinds of models that we have for catering the one which we are also trying to do in bandra is not our own asset it's going to be a partnership in terms of we would be the catering wing for the premise the ownership and the capex would be from someone else okay okay thank you that's all from my side thank you thank you the next question is from the line of prashant jaghadi from kamakya wealth management private limited please go ahead yeah good afternoon sir thank you for the opportunity uh, just wanted to know uh, any membership or loyalty program are you thinking of uh, for the entire uh, all the brands of the specialty restaurant very good question in fact last night was the final discussion to do this you see pre pandemic we had a loyalty program specialty privilege and during that period it just dithered out and we couldn't get this back for many other priorities that we have so we are in the process of doing this at the moment it is as you know it is all digital so it becomes much easier for us to do it so very soon you will have a speciality privilege card coming back sir sir and sir is there any deviani got into jv with pvr in order to increase the reach uh, just wanted to understand any initiatives from our end in order to uh, you know expand our brand image going forward see everybody has their own priorities but at the moment as we are looking at we are very bullish on the fact that we will be able to leverage the bengali channel brand the oriental brands which is kitchen vision kitchen we are adding deliveries coming through so we are not looking at any opportunity to get tied up currently but as and when anything else happens or you know you have limited time and limited money and also the priorities that you have so these are the first levels of our understanding and growth later on in the uh, life cycle we will definitely consider something which is worth while sir the current is the liquor is what percentage of our sales and what are the targets uh, internal targets to grow that uh, abhik would you like to take this question because the the bars that you have built with historically were difference sure. bars so in the totality of the company currently we are at between 11 to 12% but uh, we feel that there is scope to grow in this space hence we will be growing with three new wet led outlets for this year and nine more to come in the next three yeah interesting would like to add that uh, all restaurants which were uh, the ones which we are renovating and refreshing used to be having a dispense bar which was not in the line of sight avik took this responsibility to put all the bars that new restaurants which are being renovated and of course the one which are asia kitchen by mainly in china have a line of sight bar which is interactive wherein as you know that it's all about you know getting so there's an impulse thing so you have uh, you know the bar coming in the barman doing some kind of a activity at that point of time so you get enticed to take more and more liquor the liquor sales of slowly shown growth and we are doing a lot of interactive packages along with diageo and porno record record and they are they are the ones who are helping us and going forward there's a scope to go into a level of 15 to 18 percent fair enough sir and so i just wanted to know like any new store you open uh, what is the target break even uh, like how much time it would take uh, on an average uh, for any store to get break even between 6 to 8 months fair enough so that was helpful thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of neeraj Sik- Sixaria from Living Roots Analytics. 
please go ahead so uh, episode of the brand has done really good for us so how many new stores under the same brand are we opening as we would be opening three more this year so that will be on the episode right okay and what is the to- totality of cases that you're planning for the year ahead 25 to 30 cr and what about the new 25 restaurants that will be opening sorry so uh, the 25 to 30 cr that you have mentioned is for 8 to 9 restaurants or is it in total for the 33 restaurants that will be opening so no, this is for the total for this current year which would be 8 to 9 restaurants okay and what is totality for those 25 restaurants 75 to 85 crores 75 to 85 okay and, you know it depends on the kind of uh, size of the restaurant and uh, in some could be around 2500 some could be 3 okay and uh, just adding on to the previous person's question are we uh, how are we seeing the increase on alcohol led revenue by the growth of brands like episode 1 we see our liquor ratios in that space is 60 to 40 which is 60% being liquor 40% being food hence whereas in an asian restaurant of ours it's under 20% so when we grow episode one, we see that 60% ratio of uh, the food and beverage would be liquor. Hence, that adds to an overall increase in the liquor sales for the company. Hence, the margin. Yeah. Okay. And just to follow up on that, primarily we are aiming to increase our wet lead income by episode and not by a people or any other brand, right? That's correct. So are we planning to close those four Habibola restaurants that we existingly had? No. So that would that's currently profitable for us and any profitable restaurants we do not plan to close. But for new expansion, new growth and new market entry, episode one uh, seems the best proposition for now for us. Okay. And what is the expansion plan that we are going ahead with this plan? Is it a cluster-based based approach? Since the existing outlet is in Pavai, so are we planning to open more outlets in Mumbai and expanding it into other geographies? Yes. So we will be opening two new in Mumbai this year, one new in Calcutta this year. Okay. And the nine, the and the new, nine new restaurants that are that are coming up are also episodes. That's correct. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Upadhyay from Healthcare. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes. So, yes, hi. sir, you are audible. Okay, great. So, firstly, I would like to congratulate uh, Mr. Anjan for running the show for almost 20 years. I think it, it's not easy to run a brand in India and, and, and he is proved. Sorry to interrupt. Could you be a little louder, please? The voice is feeble. Okay. Uh, just sign on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. better, much better. Okay, so as I said, I'm I'm I'm, I'm quite happy and pleased to be a shareholder of Specialty Restaurant, uh, and I'm quite happy with the way Mr. Anjan has led the show, and I'm also happy to see the young generation has joined the business, uh, and uh, uh, as as a shareholder, it's always good to see the progress in how the business is going to grow in the coming years. Uh, so my question is uh, regarding. I understood uh, from Avik that there is a plan to expand 25 new restaurants in the next three years. I would like to know what what part of this expansion will be Middle East focused. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, you are uh, aware of the fact that the Middle East expansion is based on a model called franchisee owned, company operated. So we have. Uh, uh, we started with the Barjuman Mall unit, Asia Kitchen by Made in China at Dubai, after which we did Mall of Emirates, and now we have Oman. Within the Gulf, we are looking at minimum two stores in Dubai, and we are looking at Saudi, because that's another market, and fortunately our master franchise residue has 
presents there because they have a, a brand called Chow King. So they have the foot, footings there. So as we talk about, we are just finalizing one more location in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And um, later on, it will be Saudi, wherein we will do one store. As you know, that we try and go to one destination, wait for a while. And you'll be very happy to know that if anybody has traveled to Dubai, they will understand that all these stores of Asia Kitchen by Mainly China have not just got the footfall of the predictable Indians, they have been able to attract a huge number of almost 50% uh, of that is non-Indians coming into our stores. And because of uh, the presence and the response in Dubai, we have gotten franchise calls from at least 10 different countries of which we'll be analyzing, scanning, and then taking calls to enter new markets with Asia Kitchen by Mainland China. Okay, great. Good to hear that, and I can, I can second that thought because I live in Dubai, and uh, I, I never miss a chance to go to your restaurant, so kudos to what you have done here. Uh, my, next question, uh, my next question is, when you mentioned the 25 new restaurants, so this is not part of the Middle East, so this is all purely focused on the Indian market. That's absolutely correct. Okay. Okay, good. And uh, what are the iconic brands that you will focus in the next few years for India uh, in, in these 25 plus 8 restaurants that you will be targeting? So the power brands for us would be Asia Kitchen by Mainland China, which would also be supported by Mainland China by a delivery. The second power brand would be Episode 1 for the wet let space. These are the two major brands that we'd be focusing on for dine-in formats. For our cloud or delivery formats, we would be looking at Mainland China, Asia Kitchen, and Hakka as these three Asian strong brands for us in delivery space. Over and above, we'd be looking at our catering division in a very serious manner to be growing it into Calcutta and Mumbai regions. Okay. Thank you very much. That's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sachita Sood from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. Um, my question was, uh, what kind of um, revenues can we see for FY25 and 26? And if we could also um, know what kind of margins we'll be seeing for these two years. As you know, we are restricted by not giving you any forward-looking numbers. Uh, you can imagine and understand that if you're opening around three to four Asia kitchens and also adding minimum of around one to two, two, two and a half in this fiscal. So it will be actually eight restaurants coming in. So going forward, the revenues which have been historical will be added to that. And the bottom lines, as I said earlier, because the new stores take six to eight months, the initial absorption of that particular profitability in the sense that the breaking even time will be there. So I'm sorry, I can't take you, tell you any forward-looking numbers which is not published. Okay, okay. Uh, that's all from my side, sir. Most of my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj Mahadevya from Money Group India. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congratulations on um, managing the ship through the difficult period. Um, you did have some cost escalations on the food side. How are you thinking about using pricing as a lever going forward? Uh, interesting question. Uh, the, the basis on which we had you know, formed this company was with a proposition of five-star food and service at non-five-star prices. We are extremely careful, and in spite of the fact that there's been an inflation, for example, there's a 40% you know, inflation which has come only on one of the proteins that we sell in the form of chicken. In spite of that, we've been able to absorb it because uh, certain things can be negotiated with the suppliers in terms of you know, giving them, since we have so much of money lying, we give them advances. They need money for expansion etc. But there is 
a head room of going to at least 10 to 12 percent in terms of pricing some of them are introductory pricing so they anyway will fall into the original pricing in the next six months and there is enough scope as we see the competition coming in we don't get enticed by the kind of levels they serve we believe in value uh, for example if the average uh, competitive restaurants if they are they will be giving a portion size of around 140 grams. We continue to give 180 grams. And the fact that the, the Indian consumer is extremely sensitive about the value that they get, and hence we have continued to do it slow and steady. But as you said, there is enough headroom for us to go and increase our prices. Great. Hope, we hope to see some of that in the quarters to come. Thank you. Yes, yes, inshallah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitya Shah from Kamakya Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, regarding your international business, I heard very good reviews about your uh, Chorangi restaurant in London. So what are your plans uh, on your further expanding on this brand? We'd gone to the city of London with the, uh, you know, with the restaurant, which is Indian, but we had a differentiation because we came in with the you know, food of the city of Calcutta, which has historicals, and we were also inspired by the O Calcutta, which has shown us that regional cuisine is here to stay. You, as you rightly said, that you got good reviews. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we were to do another charangi within the city of London outskirts, but as you know, again that the uh, whole scenario in UK has not been the most favourable one. Uh, and currently we are waiting for things to settle down, but we are in Marble Arch in the heart of uh, London uh, at this point of time, but this has been deferred or passed, if I may say. There have been so many, so many of these approaches which have come in from either master franchises or some other people, but we intend doing this also here, and as you know, we had gone to uh, Houston, the city of um, uh, Indians, if you ask me, but so Dallas and uh, Houston, but Houston was another first stop of ours pre-pandemic, but as pandemic came in, you know, we stopped that expansion. Very interesting to understand that all these brands of ours, particularly a mainly in China, has a huge demand in any football area where you have Indian diaspora. So as and when our priorities come in, and we understand that UK, since your question was about Chaurangi, we will surely and definitely expand that within UK and US also. And you don't plan on bringing this uh, brand to India because I thought you, uh, you don't want to address the Indian market also. Is there too much competition? Uh, it's not just competition because that's an, a brand we have created for the in, international diaspora. And we will be able to do this uh, uh, going forward, but any brand which is given birth there, for example, there's a brand of one called Riyasat, which was at St. Regis in Doha, and uh, which was showing very good colors, but St. Regis decided to, you know, uh, do their own restaurant, so they continue to do that, and the, the, these two brands, like Chaurangi, Minichana, of course, and the Riyasat, are the three areas which they're catering to different kinds of audiences. We would definitely not bring at least the Chorangi at this point of time to India for the fact that we actually have built it and planned it for an international market. Right. And uh, just to understand, what has been your uh, marketing spend for FY24 as a percentage of sales, and do you plan on further you know, increasing this to... Uh, boost your brand awareness? Around 4 to 5% for the percentage of revenue for last year. So do you plan on increasing this going forward to increase brand awareness? So, uh, as you uh, understand and you may have heard that we have now two animals to fight. One is the dining and the other one is the delivery. 
that in delivery, if you see, uh, there is an important thing that you need eyeballs on that page. So we've been spending a considerable amount in that area. And when we launch a brand, we do our advertising, of course, the social media. Apart from that, we've been doing tactical holdings and also print, as you know, is the traditional medium, which is not necessarily the best of it. So we've been having a combination of social, that's digital media. And when we launch, we do a tactical uh, awareness campaign in that zone. But beyond that, I think it's only based on festivals and any other sports which come in during the year, like a Mother's Day, Friendship Day, or a Father's Day, that we do our promotions, some interactive ones. And going forward, it is all an A to S ratio, you understand that. As the sales goes up, I would not like to increase it from 4.5% 4, 4 to anything which is more than that. But if there is an opportunity of some kind which is coming in, in a particular market where we are not so popular, we will increase the A to S ratio. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shabham Jain from NV Alpha Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. I just had one question. You mentioned that incrementally you want to focus on two formats in terms of dining, which is Asia Kitchen, Mainland China, and the episode one. Uh, could you just help with uh, helping with the store economics? So my sense is it's about two and a half to three crores of capex per store. But you know what does the peak revenue look like, and you know what kind of cross margins and margins do we uh, see from these two formats at peak? See here, uh, Rajesh Mota this side. Uh, on the <clears throat> matrix, basically, let's say what Mr. Avik had already indicated that we spend around three between three to three and a half odd crores on a standard 2,500 square foot new restaurant, the gross margins in an oriental restaurant is between 26 to 27, sorry, 20, let's say cost is 26, 27%, which translates into a margin of 74 to 75%. Considering the other elements of expenditure, et cetera, we do work on an EBITDA of between 16 to 18% at restaurant level. And this is post rent, right? 16 to 18%? Yeah. Okay. And would the economics be similar for an episode one as well? See, here what happens is that the throughput in a uh, bar restaurant is much higher, where the EBITDA percentages increase substantially because 40% is the liquor consumption there. So we work on an EBITDA between 22 to 24% there. Understood. And what is like the peak revenue that you can do from like a 2500 square foot uh, store on an average? See, there is a big range here. It could be between 60 to 90 lakhs of rupees, depending upon the location and the delivery. Uh, 60 to 90 lakhs per month. Is that the right understanding? Right. Okay. Understood. Thank you so much. That was super helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neerav Sikharia from Living Root Analytics. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, I just wanted to know what's the split between the dining and delivery for this quarter and for the whole year? It ranges between 28 to 29 percent of the total revenues. Delivery is delivery, and the balance is dining. Could you repeat it, sorry? 28 percent, to be specific was delivery and the balance is dining. Okay. And so since we have revamped few of our mainland China restaurants, are we seeing an increase in alcohol consumption there? Yes. So historically it used to be around nine. It has already grown between ten and twelve. And with the bar coming in the line of sight, because they're all new restaurants renovated. We see a lot of interaction happening there. As I said earlier, we are also tying up with the Diageos of the world to get us better uh, you know, uh, discounts and in terms of the packages. So we've gone very aggressive on offers so that the ratios go up. So is the ratio similar for the new mainland China restaurants that we have opened? 
they are slightly more because they start from a day one uh, with the line of sight bar and they are it's a little more bistroish. If you see the Asia system by mainland China, it's slightly more casual than a mainland China, which is fine dining. Okay. And just to clarify, the alcohol uh, contribution in episode is 50% or is it 60%? I lost my last data. I bad. It was actually 60 and 60 and 40 is food. 40 is food, right? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayank Agrawal, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, my only question is, uh, you have been expanding the business that is wonderful. So, But I could see that this, this severely affects the margins. So do you think that uh, you are still planning to go on opening the new restaurants 25 in the next three years? So will the margins get affect, go on being affected and can we see the profits like the tune of ma, uh, FY23? Thank you. A very important uh, question and very uh, pertinent question. Now, as you know that it's important, growth is exp expansion is growth. These are interrelated because any corporation which has got enough funds and has relevance of a brand, any relevant brand, it is but natural that we have to expand. Now, even if we have to take uh, some, bite the bullet and take some absorption of profitability, we are very careful about the store matrix, <clears throat> the zones where we are opening, the kind of diaspora and the density of population. So, in the short term, there may be some pain, but you will see over a period of time, everything changes around because we have to add number of stores, but this time very carefully looking at the matrix and the diaspora, city, et cetera, et cetera, which we are very, very, very careful about, but it will be slow and steady growth. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press down and one to ask questions. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah, so first of all, heartfelt thank you to all the individuals and the corporations which have come in and uh, have given us an opportunity to talk to uh, all of you. As you know that currently we are not wanting to raise any funds unless otherwise there is a uh, tie-up which is coming in our, in, our, in our organic at a point of time, which is not on the table currently as we talk. And, and going forward, I would like to be informing you this coming in every quarter. We will keep on telling you our progress, and we are on right track at this point of time, and things should show you better and better strategic inputs coming in. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your